Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel, this edition's top stories. St. Lucia begins implementation of a $37 million Japanese grant for infrastructure. The Ministry of Health is fine-tuning the process for the introduction of COVID-19 vaccines on Ireland. And the government continues to implement measures to soften the socio-economic impact of COVID-19. Physical work has officially commenced on the Kalisak Bridge reconstruction project. Financed through a 37 million Eastern Caribbean dollar grant from the government of Japan, this transformative project is touted as a gesture of goodwill and friendship between Japan and St. Lucia. Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, Honorable Stevenson King, says the project will help strengthen key infrastructure while stimulating economic activity in St. Lucia at a time of global crisis. As part of the project's first phase, construction has commenced on a detour road and the St. Lucia Electricity Services Limited, Lucilec, has also begun utility relocation. Upon completion of the project, the new cul de -sac bridge will reduce bridge closures due to flooding and stabilize the volume of transportation by widening and lengthening the existing bridge. Additionally, it is expected to strengthen socio-economic development and make the arterial road more resilient against natural disasters. The Department of Infrastructure has assured that the construction of the new bridge in Kaldisak is being undertaken by international experts at global standards and the department will maintain supervision and oversight during all phases of execution. The Ministry of Health is fine-tuning the process for the introduction of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine on Ireland. The Ministry is conducting a COVID-19 vaccine survey to assess the attitudes of people living in St. Lucia towards the COVID-19 vaccines and to determine their willingness to be vaccinated. The survey uses a modified version of the Pan-American Health Organization vaccine questionnaire. The survey targets a cross-section of the population aged 18 years and older and would be administered using the SurveyMonkey platform. The survey will be distributed through the Digicel and Flow mobile communication platforms from Monday, February 15 to Monday, February 22, 2021. Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Glensford Joseph, explains. The survey is made up of 29 questions that are divided into five sections that covers your demographics, such as gender, age, and occupation. It also looks at your general attitude towards vaccines, attitude towards influenza vaccines, attitude towards COVID-19 vaccines, and your readiness to accept the COVID-19 vaccine. When you access the survey, you will be presented with a consent form. You must read the consent form, then check the box at the end of the form to agree to taking the survey. Your participation in this COVID-19 vaccination survey is valuable to the Ministry of Health. The information you provide will contribute to the Ministry's communication and education strategy aimed at empowering the people to make informed decisions towards COVID-19 vaccination. Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Glensford Joseph. Meanwhile, the ministry has informed that ahead of the actual rollout of the COVID-19 vaccination campaign, there will be a pre-registration process to ensure smooth planning and coordination of vaccination. The process for pre-registration for the COVID-19 vaccine is as follows. There is an online registration link available. The link is as follows www.surveymonkey.com slash r slash moh underscore COVID-19 vax underscore pre-registration form. For individuals who do not have access to the online registration platform, they can access this service at the wellness center nearest to them and pre-register there. This can be done either via phone or walk-in. The pre-registration for the COVID-19 vaccine will be ongoing. Pre-registration is required only once. People who pre-register for the COVID-19 vaccine will be informed of the date when vaccination will be administered in their area or institution. 
dates and venues will be published. Persons receiving their first vaccination dose will be given a COVID-19 vaccination certificate with the return date for the second dose. The second dose will be done in a similar fashion as the first dose. Meantime, fellow CARICA member states are also busy putting mechanisms in place for receipt of the vaccines under the COVAX facility. More from Toussaint King English Francis of CARICOM News Time. All CARICOM member states have been notified that they will receive the first COVID-19 vaccine allocations through the COVAX facility led by the WHO and the Global Vaccine Alliance. CARICOM countries could begin receiving doses of Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine as early as the end of this month. Director of PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne, described the delivery through the COVAX mechanism as a hopeful step in the fight against the coronavirus. PAHO um, is a partner in the COVAX facility because we believe that it offers our region the best opportunity to fast track the access to COVID-19 vaccines and at the same time to reduce the impact of the pandemic on people's lives. The Americas, our countries in the Americas, represent one fifth of all COVAX participating countries. And the truth is that many smaller countries would not have been able to access any vaccines in the short term in any, in, in any serious quantity um, without a mechanism like, like COVAX. CARICOM member states are also working assiduously to procure additional supplies outside of the COVAX facility. Several member states have announced that they are in discussions with countries including India, China and Cuba. Some member states have also announced that they have accepted the African Medical Supplies Platform offer to share its COVID-19 vaccine supply with CARICOM. I've seen some concerns being raised that we're getting a small number of vaccines from COVAX and it will only vaccinate a small number of people. I want the population to take this in the context that we are in a long line of countries in the world reaching out for what in effect is a small amount of vaccines at this time. And that is why initially we are going to get what is in effect a small volume and we are going to dedicate that small volume to particular people, those in the front line. To be able to get additional vaccines from outside of the, COVID, the COVAX uh, uh, situation, to do that, we are, the, the African Medical Council, they have, as a large body, access to a large volume of the same vaccines from the same source. And in our diplomatic arrangement at CARICOM with the African Medical Council, we have um, discussed and have accepted an offer from the Council to get some of what they are going to be having. But to do that, we as a country, at the individual country level here in CARICOM, have to commit to a volume that we will have to pay for. So outside of the COVAX group, we are now entering a group with the African Medical Council. We are in a number of bilateral talks with uh, various countries, including uh, not only China, but Russia, and India, to ensure that we can have more than that 20% for this year. And we are also talking to a number of multilateral agencies through which we think we would be able to acquire vaccine. One such multilateral agency is CARICOM has broken an arrangement with the African Union and they have set aside 1.5 million doses of vaccines for the Caribbean. And out of that allotment, Guyana, Scota is going to be 149,000 doses. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney has announced that 74,400 doses of the vaccine will arrive here in St. Lucia before the end of February. St. Lucia will also purchase a further batch of the AstraZeneca vaccine from India, as well as receive a donation of the vaccines from the Indian government, totaling some 185,000 doses.
There are also ongoing discussions for vaccines from the African Union via the African Medical Supplies Platform, AMSP, for an estimated 45,739 doses. 358 COVID-19 patients have made full recoveries here. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has reported that on Friday, 12 February, 244 patients recovered while on Sunday, 14 February, a further 124 recovered. The island also recorded 104 new cases from 613 tests conducted on samples taken between January 31st and February 12, 2021. Active cases of COVID-19 as of February 14 stood at 718. The Ministry of Health on February 12 also reported one COVID-19 related death, bringing the total number of deaths in country to date to 23. The deceased is a 62-year-old female from the Miku district who had been previously diagnosed with an underlying medical illness. Government continues to implement measures aimed at softening the socio-economic impact of COVID-19 on the population, especially the vulnerable. Minister for Gender Relations, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, says financing was repurposed to expand the safe house for women and families amid an increase in incidents of gender-based violence. Honorable Rigobert spoke to the issue in Parliament on February 9, 2021. The way we were able to repurpose funding to ensure that we were able to build and expand the safe house for women and families who are vulnerable, especially at a time like this, when many women who are already vulnerable experience even more, we, we are experiencing even more cases of gender-based violence. That was repurposed financing. And gender and gender project that the Canadian government supported, that was money again that was repurposed with a COVID-sensitive feel to it. Are they not aware, Mr. Speaker, that we expanded our bursary facility, our school feeding program, the school transportation program, additional resources, to do what? To help St. Lucian? To do what? to help those people who have lost their jobs because of COVID and now find themselves unable to fend for their families in the way that they were accustomed to. Are the members opposite not aware of those measures that we took? Are the members opposite not aware that we have had to engage in additional human resources, whether it be in the health sector or within the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, again, to do what? Because we care, Mr. Speaker. It's precisely because we care that we continue to make those valuable adjustments and injection of additional resources. In other mitigating measures, Parliament by Affirmative Resolution has approved the draft value-added tax amendment of Schedule 3 order, which amends Schedule 3 of the Act to exempt imports of personal items, food, clothing, toys, and other household consumables contained in barrels for the period of the 1st of February to the 31st of March 2021. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney explained the reasoning behind the decision. Speaker, very simple a motion to amend the value added tax to extend the barrel concession. I think that given what is taking place in St. Lucia currently, um, I think it's very justifiable as we were hoping by this point that we would have seen a more significant economic recovery, but in light of the need to uh, slow down the economy, Mr. Speaker, I think that this is a very important uh, benefit to um, some of the more vulnerable persons um, in our society. And clearly, as we see things improving in the U.S., that hopefully there are even more barrels that can come down to help some of the families that are really in need in this country. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. It's hair, the bio intelligence bio button.
and innovation to the Ministry of Health's approach in battling COVID-19. The BioButton is a state-of-the-art device. It supports people keeping regular checks of signs of possible COVID-19 infection while placed in home quarantine. It monitors temperature, heart rate, and respiratory rate. It is very simple. Just link it to your smartphone and place the button on your chest. It's that easy. The bio button costs only 100 US for the 14-day period. For further information, please contact the Epidemiology Unit at 468-5325 or 468-5324. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tan Janel, Monsieur Madame Department, Kini Responsabilité pour information à gouvernement cette ci GIS, à ce mépris télévision national PIA NTN, qu'a posé ton nouvelle Aquayol, posé ton Primus Hutchinson. Avion de système sécurité pour Jacques Caribla. RSS, déposé à son aéroport George Hafel Charles, la société Jedi, passé à 4 heures après-midi, et puis en marchandise de très valeurable pour faire bataille contre maladie corona à cette ici. Avant avion cela, c'était 2000 la vaccine AstraZeneca pour procurer traitement en pays là. C'est pays Dominique qui fait cette ici avec grand cadeau cela. Premier ministre cette ici honorable Alain Chasney, ensemble et puis Ministre de Santé, Honorable Mary Isaac, est présent pour recevoir ce bret la vaccine là et ça a aidé pour renforcer l'initiative ça là qui a établi pour traitement la vaccine là en cette ci Mais que dit passé, cette ci recevait aussi 1000 doses la vaccine hors gouvernement Babad. Première phase distribution et administration sur la vaccine ça là qui principalement pour 1500 travailleurs de santé. En parmi eux, les officiers de santé, par exemple, la police, les pompiers, les officiers qui sont responsables pour la prison bordelée, et les officiers qui étonnaient pour traiter les gens qui trouvaient blessés du un accident, et bien qui tombaient malades subitement. Bien souvent, ces officiers sont là pour pouvoir avoir une ambulance. Le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney a annoncé une session qui consiste à mardi passé qui 74 000 doses de la vaccine qui a été en pays avant le finissement du mois de février. Pour M. Chasné, M. Gouvernement Babad et Dominique, pour le grand support, c'est le site qui a aussi acheté la vaccine Hot Pay India et aussi Craspé Dose Hot Lot Organisation. Discussion, Jacques a fait aussi pour acheter la vaccine Hot Lillion des pays africains. Le ministère de la Santé a continué pour suivre le règne national qui a gouverné la maladie corona en pays là. Depuis le 11 mois de février 2021, le gouvernement s'est aussi a commencé pour soulager les grandes quantités en ça et a écouté pour que les gens qui a retourné en pays là en quarantaine. Présentement, les gens qui ont quarantaine a quarantaine seulement en bas de circonstances et conditions. C'est à une facilité à présent qui est la majorité de la qui est rester. Ça veut dire pour les gens qui sont retournés à ce pays-là. Mais c'est pour les noter que le gouvernement de cette ci a continué pour prendre la responsabilité pour toutes les dépenses de cette ci et de ceux qui sont résidents à ce pays-là qui est en quarantaine présentement. Ces dépenses-là, c'est pour les couches et les places bien et les services pour éviter. Les services de climatisation, le Wi-Fi, trois repas par jour. Les toilettes et de l'eau. Pour les gens qui dans une chambre qui est tenue pour payer 95 dollars américains, à présent, nous pouvons payer seulement 25 dollars américains. Pour les chambres qui sont des gens qui ont coûté 160 dollars américains, nous pouvons payer seulement 45 dollars américains. À présent, pour trois gens qui sont dans une chambre qui ont coûté 240 dollars américains, ça a réduit pour un 65 dollars américains. C'est pour cela qu'a abrassé la famille qui ensemble qui a reçu ces services-là. Le gouvernement a continué pour honorer le soulagement application les étudiants 
pour support à sous dépenses finances ça c'est pour yo qui ca retourner en cette ci trois mois après yo rivé en bout étudio et aussi moun qui te voyager pour traitement santé gouvernement ca aussi considérer situation économique qui très critique et l'autre circonstances durant période quarantaine cette le sien qui retourner hors l'autre pays ca trouver testé après 7 jours et si yo négatif Yo ka isa ale a kaz a ba quarantine mais yo ka ni pou porter a sou yo c'était mon so équipement pour faire assurer yo obéir quarantine et quand même du temps pour faire assurer sa te yo en ordre ça ka coûter 175 dollars américains les enfants et l'autre personne qui ka souffrir et puis cette condition santé ka trouver permission pour quarantine a kai mais ça ka fait seulement après les autorités conduit bonne investigation et visiter place là côté au Cairo ST c'est édivisé c'est édivisé ça là Kaini pour porter mon son équipement ça là à suivre aussi et Kaini pour payer pour service là gouvernement c'est le ci qu'a fait les résidents et qui ont qui les désirs pour voyager pour changer qui c'est seulement voyage qui tu es nécessaire que qu'a encouragé pour le moment ministère de santé qu'a informé public là qui en avance des services la vaccine la caïne en façon pour registrer pour faciliter meilleur service et coordination pour yon recevoir la vaccine ça là pour yon kay sa registrer en avance pour traitement la vaccine et kay nécessaire pour faire application par internet là et si ça pas possible yo sa visiter wellness center qui plus près yo yon sa souhaite servir téléphone et ben en visiter faciliter ça là un uh, exercice ça là exercice de registration en avance pour la vaccine qui continue et qui ont pas brisé faire registration ça là pas plus qui ont seul fois PPE qui pour l'avantage registration en avance qui recevra information concernant date là qui la vaccine qui available à institution qui a communio la qui aussi ni publication date et ses places là qui sera un coup les personnes qui recevraient première dose de la vaccine là, qui recevraient un certificat qui a une date là pour y retourner pour recevoir deuxième dose là. Et c'est comme ça nous avons votre nouvelle là, messieurs mesdames. Moi quand même c'est autant pour regarder, moi quand bon une invitation pour je ne puis moi encore si des conseils la vie, les gars pour cette autre nouvelle à quoi alors pour ça, mon cas vieux pour ça tout général. Merci Apple Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.